In an early video, I showed you the Redux dev tools that allowed us to look at exactly what's happening, inspect the payloads, and even toggle on and off actions that have happened when they aren't necessarily the last thing that has happened. So for example, if I delete uh, this one, and then I go ahead and add one, and then I'll add maybe a second one. Now I've added two comments and removed a comment. If I'm working on something and I'm sort of like debugging or I want to go back in time to turn that one back on, I can simply just toggle the remove comment on and off. You see it's right here. This one looking great, Wes. That one gets turned on and off, on and off, on and off without having to affect any of these other things. Because what happens is that we, we change the state and it's going to replay all of these actions back on top of us. Same thing happens when we hot reload our reducers as we just learned is that all of these actions get played back to us, which is really exciting. So let's look at how do we actually install it, and then we'll look at some of the more advanced features with the reset, revert, sweep, and commit. So what you do is we use a store enhancer, which will allow us to add things to our store, like Redux DevTools. And there's a whole suite of things you can do with your Redux store. You can take a look at the GitHub, but uh, the Redux DevTools is probably the most common, and uh, sort of like an entry level one. So let's open up our dev tools here and let's go to the Redux dev tools. And you see like this says no store found. And that's because uh, the Chrome extension in Redux dev tools doesn't know about our store. So we need to enhance our store um, by first of all, creating the enhancers. So say constant enhancers equals compose. And compose is a uh, method that we imported from Redux. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna infuse our store with any of the uh, enhancers that we want. I'm going to put that on its own line. And you could load in the dev tools yourself and, and pop them up from here. Um, but it is much easier to just use the Redux dev tools Chrome extension. And uh, first of all, check for the dev tools extension in the window. Use a ternary operator here. So if that is there, then we will run it. Um, otherwise, we will uh, simply just return uh, the store itself. So that will enhance it. And then we take this enhancers right here. And we when we create our store, we pass it the re root reducer, the default store, and then we can also pass it the enhancers. So when I save that now and refresh, got a little bit of error, double check what that is. Compose is not defined. Oh, we got to spell compose right. Go over to our Redux dev tools. And now we've got everything happening here. I'm going to like something, increment likes. That's our action that got fired. You see that this is our payload right here. It has an index. We go to the comments. We changed our location. That is also part of it. That's when we re infused the React Rudder with our store. That's why we're able to, to go back and forth between those things. I can go ahead and add something and add it in there. You see this payload is a little bit bigger. It has a post ID, an author, and a comment. So this is really good for inspecting like what actions are getting fired at what time and, and what information uh, is in each of those. And as well, it also gives you a copy of state at the time of this happening. So I'll go back, I uh, like a few more, like a few more, like a few more. And obviously you can turn these things on and off and you see like that goes from 79 to 69. Why is it doing 10? Because we, we changed it to 10 in the last video. You can change it back to one if you like it. So that's really it to uh, set up your store with Redux DevTools. Now let's take a look at all these buttons, reset, revert, commit, and sweep. Sweep will remove any disabled actions from your log. So let's say like, okay, I did all this stuff, but like maybe I didn't want this increment like, and I didn't want this increment like. If I go ahead and sweep that, it's as if they never happened. They get swept from the thing, whereas the rest of the actions that we have do still stay. Commit will work similar to a git commit where it will remove all of the actions from your log and make your current state the initial state. So if we think about like the initial state, generally when you load the page, that's your initial state. But if we commit everything, now you see that it's all cleared, but the likes and the comment that I added to this is still there. So what we did right there is we committed that to our initial state um, and then revert what it will do is it will revert anything since your last commit. So I'm going to add another one right here and says uh, stupid dog, right? And then I realize, oh, that, that's not a very nice thing to do. So I'm going to revert back to that last commit that I just made. So I'm going to revert. So a couple things happened. 
it it put me back to the home page because that was an action. And then it also took away that mean comment that I previously had left. But everything that I've done since the page load wasn't gone because we, what did we do with those? We committed them. And then finally, reset will bring uh, all act, will remove all actions and bring your store back to its initial state. This in, includes anything you've committed. So maybe you say, okay, um, this is essentially just a page reload uh, for you. So I'm going to hit reset. And you'll see that now that zero, that set, that first comment that I did there was gone. So take some time and play around with it. You can really see the benefit uh, of using something like this after you, you play along, especially once you get into some really uh, heavy duty stuff, maybe not so simple as a like and a, a comment ad, but when you're building some really big applications, this is going to be a lifesaver. <laughs>